Are you ready to pivot in your life? Pivot is the message. We're going to do a four-part message about pivoting. Where do you need to pivot in your life? You don't want to miss this. You want to pivot to God in all of your life? Then join me on this next four-part series. It's going to really enlighten your life. Come right back. Friends, are you ready to pivot? Are you ready to pivot to God? Nothing can be greater in your life than pivoting to God. We're going to take you on a journey of where in your life you can pivot. And we're going to look at people in scripture who pivoted to God. We're going to look at people in the world who benefited from pivoting to God. I'm telling you right now, I think of a man in scripture who had to learn to pivot to God the hard way. Have you ever done that? Learn to trust God the hard way? Well, this guy in the Old Testament, his name was Jonah. God told Jonah that he wanted him to go to the city of Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to do it. He did not want to do it. And so instead of following God and being obedient... Jonah went his own way. Have you ever done that? Have you ever gone your own way, your own direction? God is telling you to do something. He's telling you to drop that temptation. He's telling you to change in an area in your heart. He's telling you all these things, and then you say, I don't want to do that. You, you become self-centered, and you go in your own direction. Well, Jonah did that. Jonah said to God, I hear what you told me to do, but I don't want to do that. And so we see Jonah going in the opposite direction of Nineveh. But you know what? God sees every detail in your life. Jonah gets on the ship going the opposite direction to Tarshish. And when he gets on the ship, the ship almost sinks because there's a great storm. All the guys on board say, who is causing us to be in this storm? They knew that there was a problem and God was causing the storm. And Jonah admitted, I am running from God. I'm going in the wrong direction. And Jonah had a conversation with them. Scripture says the sea was getting rougher and rougher. And so they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Jonah said, pick me up and throw me into the sea and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. You see, Jonah was facing the consequences of pivoting his life in the wrong direction. And so God noticed this, and then they cried out to the Lord. They said, please, Lord, don't let us die for taking this man's life. Don't hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and they threw him overboard and the raging sea immediately grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and they made vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. And we know the story. You've seen the pictures of Jonah in the well. Jonah gets swallowed up. And just like God, he doesn't give up on us. We go in the wrong direction. We disobey. We don't follow what he's telling us to do. And you know what? God gives you chance after chance after chance to turn and go in the direction of God. And that's what he did with Jonah. So inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord. He, uh, he cried out to God. Have you ever done that when you've been in distress and you've gone the wrong direction and you're in a trial and tribulation and you realize... I'm in this mess because I've made the wrong choice. That's what happened to Jonah. He cried out to God and he said, In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help 
and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled around me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I've been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Jonah is saying, I want to look again to you, God. I want to pivot. I want to pivot my life toward you, God. I want to stop going in the wrong direction, and I want to pivot in the right direction. Are you ready to pivot? Are you ready to pivot in your life to the direction of God? And here's what happened. The engulfing waters threatened him. The deep surrounded him and seaweed was wrapped around my head. Jonah is still crying out to the Lord. He said, to the roots of the mountains, I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord, my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Pivot to God and he will hear your prayer. What is it you need to pray about? Pivot to God like Jonah did and he's going to hear your prayer. He says, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with the shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish right at that moment and vomited Jonah out. You see, Jonah made a decision. He made a decision to pivot to obedience. He made a decision to pivot to God's promises. So now Jonah was getting on the right track. Do you know what can happen when you get on the right track with the Lord? Some of you may have an alcohol problem. Maybe that's your problem. Maybe you've fallen into temptation with drugs. Maybe you take too many sleeping pills. I don't know. Name whatever it is that you have a problem with. Maybe overeating, maybe gossiping, whatever. There's a list of sins that the Bible talks about. But God wants to say to you, pivot to me in every area of your life. When you pivot to God and you get on the right direction, let's see what can happen. So we see Jonah, here's the word of the Lord, and he came to him the second time. He says, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim this message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and he went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city and it took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh is going to be overthrown. The Ninevites believed Jonah and they believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. There is a key to pivot. Maybe you're facing a challenge that hasn't broken through. Scripture teaches us over and over and over again to fast and pray. Fast and pray. Jonah says it right here. He tells the Ninevites, fast and pray. Fast and pray and pivot to God. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and he sat down in the dust. And this is the proclamation that the king issued to Nineveh. Now remember, this is not a king who has a history of following God. So Jonah pivoting to go to Nineveh is now influencing the king of Nineveh to listen to God. Jonah is influencing a whole city to turn to God. This is the proclamation. He said, By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people, animals, herds, or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent with his compassion and turn from his fierce anger so they, we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. So God relented. Do you know there are times in Scripture when God relents, when God changes his mind? They, they fasted, they pivoted, they prayed. They went from following false idols and false gods to following the one true God. Maybe you're listening and you've doubted God. You've doubted that he's real. You've doubted that he's true. 
Well, you know what? That's the same with this king and these people. They doubted the one true God, but when they chose to fast and pray to the one true God, and they were facing destruction of their land, then miracles happened. Miracles happened in the land, and God saved the land. They turned their hearts to God. You see, Scripture says this when you pivot to God. It says, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Pivot and seek God with all your heart. It says in Luke chapter 11, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. I think of the story of Abraham in the Old Testament who asked God, God, he cried out to God. He said, God, if there's 50 people righteous in this land, will you save the land? And then he bargained with God and he said, God, would you save the land? And he, and he started going from 50 on down. And you know what? If there's someone righteous in this land, would you, would you save it? Would you save those people? And because of Abraham's prayer and petition to God, it changed the course of that city. You see, you need to pray, pivot, and seek God. Pivot to be strengthened. Sometimes you're going through trials and tribulations. Pivot to God's strength. It says in Psalm chapter 105, Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. You know, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Jonah's nerves going into that city of Nineveh? Can you imagine what he must have felt like? He knew that God was going to destroy the land if they didn't turn their hearts around and he was going to be in that land. Sometimes you walk into a situation and you just feel like it's turbulent. You don't know how it's going to turn out. It makes you feel weak. Well, you know what? You have to trust God in the midst of that. You have to turn to him and turn your heart to him and put your hope in the Lord. And then after you put your hope in the Lord, pivot to his joy and gladness. Pivot to God's joy and gladness. Scripture says in Isaiah 35, it says, Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing, and everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. You see, you've got to pivot your heart to God, and then you've got to pivot to joy and gladness. How many of you could say that you've had trouble lately allowing the joy of the Lord to be your strength? How many of you can say that the Lord is your gladness? I know it's a temptation to get into a rut of depression. It's a temptation to not allow yourself to feel the joy of the Lord. Well, I'm the messenger coming to you to say it's time to pivot. It's time to put away all of those things that are hindering you from the joy and the gladness of the Lord. Are you ready to pivot? If you're in your living room or wherever you're watching this, let's pivot together. Are you ready? Let's pivot and say, you know what? I'm going to pivot toward God. Let's just, let's physically pivot. Are you ready? Let's pivot and say, we're going to pivot to God. Let's just pivot. Pivot your life. Turn around and, and say, I'm going to pivot today. I'm listening to what Dr. Marla's saying, and it's time to pivot some areas of my life around. Pivot to God. Pivot to all his fullness of whatever he has for you. Pivot to his strength. I mean, God has so much to give you that's provided for you. You know what? God cares about every detail. And he made the heavens and the earth. He made the mountains. He made the, the lake that you're looking at. He made the seas. He made the seashells that are in the seas and the sand that's on the, on the seashore. Think about this. God knows every single hair on your head, according to scripture. He knows every piece of sand on a seashore. 
If God is that detailed, he sees your heart, he knows what you're going through, and God is saying, you know what, pivot that to me. Pivot to God, pivot it to me. Whatever it is you're dealing with, give it to the Lord. Allow the Lord to be your strength. Allow the Lord to be your joy in that area. You know, Jonah had a huge task. I can honestly see why he went in the opposite direction. I can remember when God laid me out at an altar and he called me to preach his word around the world. I was overwhelmed by that. And I know that God's asked you maybe to do something in your family or maybe it's something at work. Maybe he's asking you to change something. Whatever that area of sin is that you need to change and draw closer to him. Maybe you're a mom at home and you don't know how you're going to do being a mom every single day with little children. I've been there too. Well, you know what? Just keep seeking the Lord. Keep allowing the Lord to fill your heart. Keep pivoting to him. Keep giving it to him. If you're a mama at home, you're making a difference in those kids' lives. Keep telling them about the Lord. Keep praying over them. Maybe you have teenagers. Keep praying with them. Keep taking them to church. You know, I, I have teenagers, and I've already had two that are now adults. And maybe you see their life, and you think, God, are they ever going to follow you with all their heart? Well, don't give up, because Scripture says, if you train them up in the way they shall go, when they grow old, they will not depart from it. And parents and grandparents, I believe you're going to see a pivot in those kids' lives. Keep on praying and pivot to prayer. Keep believing God because God can do anything. Think about Jonah being in the belly of that well. He probably thought, I am absolutely hopeless. I'm sure the moment he was swallowed up, he thought, I'm, I'm going to die. This is it. God is punishing me, and I think we can get in that rut to think there's trials and tribulations. God is not listening. He's not caring, but you know what? God does. God heard every prayer Jonah spoke to him, and you know what? God wanted the best for Jonah. God wants the best for you. God wants the best for those children and those grandchildren, and he wants you to pray it into existence there's some things that I've dealt with and I'm still dealing with and I'm still seeking the Lord about. And if you ever get into a, a place of discomfort or you feel like, okay, God's not listening, nothing's happening, and you think it's, you know, you wonder if God's listening, I'm here to tell you God is listening to you. He is listening to everything you're saying. He's wanting you to keep praying and keep seeking Him. And remember, Jonah did get spit out from the well. When he got into the right direction and say, God, I'm going to go in your direction, not mine. When, when you get out of your own selfish desires and you say, God, not my will be done, but yours, God. When you get out of that mindset and you start saying, God, I want to follow you. I want to do what you want me to do. I don't want to give up, Lord. When you get out of those mindsets and you let it all go and you let the chains break off of you and you say, God, I'm going to pivot to you. Pivot to God, and you're going to see amazing things happen in your life. Number one, you're going to see peace. Number two, you're going to feel joy. Number three, you're going to feel that uh, love of God fill up inside of you. I mean, when you follow God with all your heart, you get all of those things. You get the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control when God fills you you get all of that and you're going to pivot to peace when you follow God and you pivot to him you're going to get peace Isaiah 26 verse 3 says this you will keep in perfect peace those who minds are steadfast because they trust in you when your mind is on God you get peace so I'm going to encourage you, let's pivot to peace. Are you ready? Pivot to God's peace. Pivot to his peace. Don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What is it in your life that you need to change? What is it that's keeping you from having peace? You can't control what other people do, but you can control your mind and how you approach the things that are going on around you. It's a mindset. 
So I'm going to encourage you right now, pivot your mindset. Pivot your mindset to say, I can't control what's going on around me, but when I pray and I seek God and I've pivoted God to God completely, I'm going to lay it at your feet, Lord. When I've prayed and I've trusted you, God, then I'm giving it to you. You know, the throne room of God is saying, I hear that prayer like I heard Jonah's. I see that you're going through that distress like that ship that almost sunk. I see what you're going through. But when you give it to God and you pivot to him and pivot toward peace, then what do you have to worry about? What do we have to worry about? You know, really, our life is like a vapor according to scripture. We're here for a very short time. We are here very, very short time. What are you going to do in that time between when you were born and when you die? What are you going to do in that time period? Better yet, what are people around you going to say about the choices you made? Are they going to say that's a person who trusted God? Are they going to say that's a person who lived their life how they wanted to? You know, Jonah had a decision, didn't he? He could have continued to go in the way he wanted to go and live a selfish life. God gave him free will to make the choice, and he gives you the free will. Or Jonah could pivot and say, you know what? Going in my own direction and doing the things that I want to do my own way brought disaster, calamity. I almost died. I had so many trials and tribulations when I went in my own direction. I think I'm going to pivot and follow God and pivot to God with all my heart. And then when you pivot to God with all your heart, you can walk into that area of peace. You see, Jonah couldn't control the city of Nineveh, but he could control his own actions. He could control what God had asked him to do. And because of Jonah following God and pivoting to him, a whole city was spared. Think about that. Because of your actions and your voice and your encounter with those around you, you can make a difference in those around you. Keep praying for them. Keep giving them stories. Keep loving on people. You may be the only Bible that someone ever reads. The other people may not ever pick up a Bible and read it. But what if your love, what if your presence to them Cause them to want to know God. That's what we need to be. We need to be people that lead people to God. If you're listening and you're getting condemnation and you're thinking, boy, I've really missed it. Well, guess what? I have too and we all have. That's what this message is about. It's about pivoting to God, saying, you know what, God? I want to I pivot to you wholeheartedly in every area of my life like Jonah did and then see what God is going to do it's going to be a beautiful, amazing thing in your life. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. If you've been weary and burdened, turn to the Lord. He's going to give you rest. You're going to get that rest that you're seeking I want, to, I want to encourage you to pivot to God, and I'm going to close in prayer. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that people are listening will pivot to you wholeheartedly. God, I thank you for the story of Jonah that shows all of us humanity. We've all fallen short. We've all sinned. We've all gone in our own selfish direction. And Lord, I just pray that people are listening, that they'll be sensitive to this message. I pray they'll pivot wholeheartedly to you, God, in their heart, in their mind, I pray, God, that they'll turn around today to pray, to trust you, and they'll see their direction in their life be at peace. And God, we just praise you for all you're doing in people's lives, and we turn it all over to you in Jesus' name. I just want to praise God with you. Thank you, partners, so much. I praise God for all that you're doing to help us take the gospel around the world. We could not be doing this without your help and support. And so we know we're reaching people for the gospel. Lives are changing. We get phone calls. We get letters. And we're just so grateful uh, for your help. So thank you. God bless you. And stay with us because we're going to go into part two of Pivoting to God. Thank you for having me into your home. I'm so excited about this beautiful mug that has scripture on it 
that I believe you can start your day off right with. Every day you can wake up and have a cup of coffee or like me, have a cup of tea. And you can celebrate the goodness of God in your life and look at the scripture that says on the cup that says, the Lord is my high ridge, my stronghold, my deliverer. My God is my summit. From Psalm chapter 18, verse two. God is our high ridge and our summit. You know, we need to let go and let God. And sometimes in the morning, we need to be reminded of that. And so we want to get this mug to you. It's this beautiful red and black and white color. I think of the color red. It reminds me of Jesus shedding his blood for us. I, I think of the woman at the well. I think of the woman hemorrhaged with blood. I think of all kinds of things in scripture. And so ladies, I know this would be special to you as you're at home with your children in the morning before they get up. I believe if you start your day off in the Lord fellowshipping with him, it's going to be a good day. This is special for you. We've gotten these for a short period of time. With your $15 donation to the ministry, you're going to get this wonderful mug. I want to add another additional thing to go into your marriage. I have a wonderful marriage booklet called Love the Most. If you want something to empower your marriage, then for a $20 donation, you're going to get the booklet for your marriage and the coffee mug. We also have a special opportunity, ladies, for you, my sisters in the Lord. I just did a four-part teaching series on women in the Bible called God is with her, she will not fail. If you get this set, you're going to get a bonus teaching, a 32 minute bonus teaching on many more women that no one else will get. This is going to be exclusive of this DVD package. They're only $30 and that $30 will help us take the gospel around the world. With your $50 donation to the ministry, you're going to get a three piece set. You're going to get the DVDs with the extra bonus. You're going to get the marriage booklet and the mug. Ladies, I am here to empower, encourage, and help everything in your life to draw closer to the Lord. I want to empower you with the Word of God. That is the key to unlock enrichment in your life. There's two ways, ladies, you can get these gifts. You can go to the phone, go to 417-598-2577. You can call and order it there, or ladies, you can go to the website, go to drmarla.org, and you can order it online. Remember, with God, all things are possible. Keep seeking Him. Keep loving Him. Get these things for you today or for a friend. Go to 417-598-2577, or go to the website, go to drmarla.org. God bless you and remember with God, all things are possible for you.